occasionally embark on an ambitious series of 3D prints that come out pretty well, except for eh, maybe one or two failed parts. This is exactly what happened with some of my first large prints, like this demon sculpt by Duncan Shadow Luca. In this video, I'll show you how to repair and improve your prints like I did with this one. Let's do it. Hi everyone, Danny the 3D Printing DM here. Welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things related to 3D printing for your tabletop games. Today I'm excited to share one of the ways I repair some of my multi-part and failed 3D prints, and also share some of the mistakes I've made along the way, so hopefully you don't make them yourself. Really, I'm not a perfectionist printer, and I feel like this type of fix isn't a requirement. In fact, sometimes I leave failures the way they are and just kind of take it for what it is. But if you're one of those people that really want your minis to look extra nice with as little defect as possible, this would be a good step to really make them uh, look as, as polished as possible. In some cases, there really is no salvaging it, you'll just need to reprint it. But in many cases, you can save the time and the filament by repairing it using something called green stuff or nedetite. I think I said that right. This is a little trick from I've, I've gotten from the wargaming and kind of the mini sculpting community who've been doing this for a lot longer than we have in the 3D printing community. And I'm here to share that it works just as well on 3D prints as it does on regular miniatures, plastic, metal, whatever you were using before. It's also a very cheap solution. It only cost me $10 for these two big pieces of green stuff that I've been using for all these months. And I do quite a bit, <laughs> you know, and the, and the sculpting tools cost me, I think five to $10 as well, but you can probably get the cheapest ones and be just fine. I will include affiliate links down in the description below if you're interested in picking some of these up. Let's talk for a brief moment about what green stuff is and when I feel it's best used. Green stuff is a two part epoxy, which means you basically cut off a small piece and you wet your fingers and your hands a bit and you combine these two materials, that blue and yellow stuff, you roll it together, you knead it, and you just kind of mash it together in every way possible until the blue and yellow fuse to become green stuff. <laughs> green stuff is best used for three things. First, filling gaps between joined printed parts. Second, covering up holes or areas that didn't print or failed. And third, as a last resort to smooth areas that are still really rough after support removal and cleanup. Once you have that little ball of green stuff, you keep your fingers, hands, and your tools wet. You take off a very thin piece and you just drop it into the crack of the hole. Then using either your hands or some kind of sculpting tool, you push down and you try and create a smooth transition over the area, as smooth as possible. And then you just let it cure, it just air cures. And I usually wait something like 24 hours. At this point, your model is ready to be primed and painted and you can see what your result looks like. Like new, right? Well. Not always. So here are some things to try and avoid when you're working with green stuff. Using too much can create unnatural bumps. To prevent this, use a little bit less and build up rather than using a single huge lump from the start. For me, it's just much easier to work with smaller, thinner pieces for gap filling. And you also use less at a time, so your green stuff lasts longer. Additionally, using too little pieces can, can leave gaps you know, so try to find that right balance and just make that transition as smooth as possible. Watch out for working with the clay with dry hands. If you do, it's gonna get really sticky and be very difficult to work with. So solution, keep your fingers wet. Don't be afraid to get water on this stuff. It won't disappear or anything like that. And trust me on this, keeping your hands and fingers really wet just makes it so much easier to work with this stuff. It also helps with solving the next green stuff boo-boo, which is, Number three, fingerprints in the clay if you're working with your hands. Water is also the solution to this problem. You just wet your hands and your fingers and it'll make smoothing it maybe with the side of your thumb or, or you know maybe even your fingers if you're using that, it'll make it much easier. And it'll allow you to smooth it faster than using a tool or something like that. Although of course you can use a tool to smooth it out as well and wetting it makes it a lot easier as well. At least for me, this is what ended up helping me in this regard. I obviously still have some improving to do, but the good thing is after you add on the primer and you paint it, it usually isn't too obvious if you do leave a few fingerprints on the clay. So it's not that big of a deal in the world as long as it's smooth and you can't really tell otherwise. That's just my opinion. Finally, for those of you who have questions about the tools you need to work with green stuff, like I did at first, this final segment is for you. My favorite tool was my hands. I saw everyone using these sculpting tools online, but after I got them and I started to use them, uh, as a non-sculptor, really what felt more natural and comfortable for me was my hands and my fingers. 
it was just so much easier for me to put down little pieces of green stuff and then naturally roll over it with my hands or my fingers. And the downside with this again was the fingerprints, but working with enough water really helped that. For basic repairs, really, I only needed one sculpting tool and that was a really thin one that could get in between the lines and get in the areas that my fingers couldn't get. It's really easy to get hung up on buying expensive tools when you're breaking into this hobby and you're buying enough stuff for 3D printing. But honestly, super simple, five, $10 sculpting tools will pretty much work just fine. In fact, I could probably do what I did with like a toothpick or something like that to smooth it out. Maybe that's because I don't, I haven't used them long enough to learn exactly how to use them, but that's how I feel after working with it for several months. <laughs> that thin piece that I mentioned though is very convenient for working in small areas, like for example, the dragon head that I did. You know, it made it a million times easier to get in those creases and try to be as smooth as possible. And if you're interested in doing really detailed sculpts on top of these repairs, then you should definitely look up some green, green stuff sculpting videos. Uh, kit bashing is another way that they use it in the wargaming community. There are quite a bit of videos out there covering that by much better sculptors than me. This is just pretty much for the very, the very basic stuff. The last important tip I can give you is, you know, don't be afraid of this stuff. You just start working with it and get comfortable with it because, you know, if you're working with a failed print, worst case scenario, you mess it up and you reprint it, which you probably were gonna do anyways if it bothered you that much. Best case scenario, you salvage the print and save yourself probably a lot of, you know, 24 hours worth of printing or whatever, however long that big large mini took you or even longer and you learn how to do something and you kind of, you work even more with your print and that's a great feeling and a satisfying feeling to fix it. At the end of the day, you can always, you know, trim it off or file it or sand it down if you want to and just make sure you wear a mask because at least I didn't want to ingest any of this, any of the particles from sanding it. So it's just easier if you do have a little bit more, you just sand it down, no big deal. At the end of the day, uh, applying green stuff to your minis is something that I think can take your minis from good to really great and to really having a more polished professional look. Now it's your turn. If you have any tips for working with green stuff that I might have left out or that you have from years of working with it, I'd love to hear it. I know that the community would too. Maybe there's another material you like to work with or another way that you like to repair your prints that are failed in this way. Leave your comment below and share it with the community. If you enjoy videos like this one that have to do with 3D printing for your tabletop games, I'd love to have you subscribe and join our community down below. We'd love to have you and help you start 3D printing stuff to help make your tables just that much more engaged. Thanks again for watching, happy printing, and happy gaming.